Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Uh, it is February 22nd, 6.30 p.m. Um, it's only a little over a day since the last update. This is update number eight. But so much has happened in the last day that I wanted to make this video. I feel like there's some things that probably need to be said to those of you living in other countries, especially uh, in the U.S., but really anywhere in the world. Um, and I'll get to some other reasons in, in a little bit. But first, just a quick rundown of some of the things that have happened locally here in China in the last few days. So as we have been covering the last couple updates, there's been this weird thing with the numbers where it peaked because they started including clinical diagnosis, so people that showed uh, spots in their lungs uh, from a CAT scan, uh, and then they stopped doing that uh, a few days ago. And not only did they stop doing that, but they also started subtracting numbers um, from that uh, overall infected total. And they were subtracting cases that were uh, proving negative on the um, the tests that they were doing, the genome, the genome tests, I believe, the genetic tests, um, which was causing a lot of confusion, not just among the medical community, the people that are analyzing these numbers, as I mentioned yesterday, but also among the populace here. People were very, very uh, upset about that. Now, as a result of that, uh, there was a, a quite a big backlash, and so the uh, officials went back and they told them to put those numbers back into their, the official numbers. So this is an article here from the South China Morning Post. Uh, Chinese province tries to end coronavirus confusion after telling officials they cannot remove confirmed cases from the list. So they put those numbers back in. So that number jumped again. It went down a little bit and then it jumped back up. Uh, it's anyone's guess as to what's going to happen next with these numbers. But that's been happening uh, here locally. Uh, another thing... <coughs> Another thing is that there were a bunch of new cases that uh, were not related to these numbers that were coming in and out, but these were 500 new cases coming from prisoners. So this has been a big news uh, item here. There are people in prisons, and prisons in China are not like prisons in America or in other countries. They're very crowded. Um, in some prisons, they're saying there are 20 prisoners in a cell that's meant to hold 10, so they're overcrowded. So you can imagine how quickly something like this would spread. If it's going to spread on a cruise ship, well, then certainly it's going to spread uh, in a prison. So 500 new cases from prisons alone uh, and different provinces. Only half of those numbers come from Hubei province. The other half, about 100, 250 or so, are from other provinces, including the province that we're in here. So that doesn't mean that we're in imminent danger. Obviously, these people are locked away, but there are guards, there are workers in those prisons, so I'm sure they're going to be watched carefully to see if they show any signs. They're probably already under quarantine, but that information hasn't really been released. Um, as regards to the economy, yesterday we mentioned that uh, that's going to be a big concern in the coming weeks and months. And already this morning there was a report uh, also from the uh, China Morning Post. Here you can see it that the car sales have collapsed here. And this isn't surprising. Uh, cars in many cases are a luxury item here in China. You don't necessarily have to own a car. Um, and people aren't going out to buy cars. So here in this article, it mentions there was a 92% drop in car sales in China in the first half of February. So February of this year compared to last year, last year they sold 59,000 vehicles in this first two-week period, and this year is 4,900, about 5,000. So that's a huge hit to the economy here. Um, despite the hopes of many people that the economy is going to get on track, they've been saying, oh, we're going to meet all our goals, we're going to meet the growth, which is about 6% for this year. But that doesn't look very um, promising, it doesn't look like it's going to be possible. And of course, other countries are going to feel this. There's going to be more and more reports of shortage of supplies uh, in other countries' components. We mentioned in the last video as well, things that aren't going to be able to be built, even if they're built in America or built in Europe, uh, because they're not getting those, those components, those essential components from China. So this is going to see ripple effects throughout the year. And the fact is that people are still not going back to work here in many areas. Um, more and more every day are going back, but uh, it's still nowhere near the production that it should have been at uh, for a normal year. Um, but that's all China stuff. Uh, I really wanted to make this video for another reason, even though there's been a lot happening here. But what's happening in some other countries, especially in South Korea, is extremely concerning. So this is what was... Uh, these are the, the numbers that I woke up to this morning. It's like the first thing I do when I wake up is check these numbers to see what's going on. Obviously, as many of you know, my wife is Korean. We have friends in Korea. No one in this particular area that's being affected, but everyone in Korea is now watching this thing. Just like in China, we're all watching what was happening in Wuhan. So yet this morning uh, when I woke up, South Korea 
their cases had jumped uh, again from previously when I had made the last video. Uh, they were at 204 cases. Now, as of this afternoon, uh, at 6 o'clock, the cases in South Korea jumped by 224. So again, doubling to a total of 433. Now, most of these cases are linked to the church. If you've been following this, you know that there was a uh, religious sect there called the, let me look for the name here, called the uh, Shincheonji Church. And one woman uh, apparently has infected not just dozens, but possibly hundreds now. They're all coming from this, this uh, cluster. And what's, I think, especially worrisome about this is that this wasn't contact. This woman didn't have contact with these people in like the last week or two. But this was from January 31st to February 2nd. There was an event, a funeral held in that church that were thousands present and 500 of the people that were came in, that came in contact with this woman are showing symptoms. Now, not all 500 are confirmed, but it seems like a good uh, portion, possibly even a majority of them are confirmed. So again, we're seeing this thing spreading so fast. On the cruise ship, it was the same thing. You start with a couple cases and then within just a few days, within a few weeks, you've got hundreds of cases, 600 cases. So what measures are being taken there in, um, in Daegu in China, or in uh, South Korea rather? Well, looking at some of these pictures, it is very reminiscent of what has already happened here. So disinfecting the buses, guys riding around on their motorcycles with disinfectants, people wearing full protective gear, uh, goggles and the full plastic uh, outfits, no one going out uh, outside. Uh, it's been designated a special care zone. Um, they have canceled uh, school, they have canceled uh, large uh, events like concerts. No one's out on the streets, it's turned into like a ghost city. Uh, someone described it as a, a zombie apocalypse movie, which I think is, is the way I would describe what happened here earlier. Just looking outside and there's just no one out. It's just such an eerie thing when you live in a city with millions of people. So that's happening in South Korea. And it looks like those numbers are probably going to continue to rise. but. Still, the, the uh, World Health Organization has not called this a global pandemic. Pandemic meaning that it's not just focused on a single city there in Wuhan, but it's all spread around the, the earth. It still hasn't been called that, although many experts are saying this really should be called a pandemic. It looks like a pandemic. It's not just confined to one area. But we'll see whether that definition changes. My guess is it's probably going to change within the next few days, if not within the next 24 hours. Now. There's another area that is undergoing something very similar to what's happening there in Daegu, although not at the same scale, and that is in Italy. Um, if you look back at this chart here, this is the current uh, Worldometer's uh, uh, figures for Italy. Uh, they also went up by quite a bit, 30% or so, to now 33 cases, and they already have two deaths. Um, so this has prompted one Italian town. I believe the name of this town is, yeah. Kodag Kodagno um, has prompted them to do something similar to what we saw here in China, throughout China, and also what is happening there in South Korea, where they're just shutting things down. Um, they are uh, stopping schools, uh, municipal offices, stores selling foods, bars, discos, sports facilities, everything is shutting down. So again, in, in Italy, in South Korea, you're seeing similar measures of um, basically shutting down these cities. Now, another related story, and this is going to relate into what we're going to talk about in a second, is what's happening in Ukraine. You may have seen this again if you're following this news. There was um, quite a bit of upheaval in a town in Ukraine because of a fake email that went out telling people that there were confirmed cases of coronavirus already in their town. Um, and that caused a huge backlash. In fact, even to the point of people rioting and protesting, throwing bricks, smashing out windows of a bus that was carrying people that were evacuating from China. They had not tested positive, although that obviously doesn't mean anything these days, but they had not tested positive for the virus, but now they were coming back into uh, this town and people had this kind of reaction. Now this is kind of the thing that uh, I personally am concerned with, with a lot of countries, because you don't see this kind of thing in China. There's so much control uh, over over people, over protesting, over you know rioting, that kind of thing. So things are generally very safe. When a big event happens, you might not even know about it. Um, and you know, if you saw anything like this, people would just be hauled off. But in other countries, they don't have that kind of control. Uh, there's a lot of more distrust 
uh, of, of governments in other countries. So this is kind of the way I could see things going in a lot of areas, and it's really, really worrisome um, because things can, can explode so quickly. And really, at that point, the, the imminent danger is not the virus itself, but it's people, what people are doing because they're afraid. Out of fear, they're acting in these really extreme ways and causing much more damage than the the actual virus itself. Now, next, we're, we're going to be talking about how this all kind of relates to you. Why do I keep making these videos? There's other people doing this. Uh, there are people that are much more knowledgeable about the disease. There are people much more knowledgeable about um, the this particular epidemic than I am. So why am I, I doing these videos? And it all goes back to, I think, the very first video or maybe the second video about that my concern for uh, friends and family back home, uh, especially in America where I'm from, and really friends that I've made through, throughout the years from here in China that are in other countries that maybe are only reporting a few cases. It's easy to look at those small numbers and think, well, I'm, I'm fine. There's, there's five cases. There's four cases. There's a dozen cases. We have 300 million people in this country. What are the chances? Um, but there's a few things that that, isn't, that kind of mindset isn't taking into consideration. So I want to show you something here from, this is from the official CDC site. Now, obviously, this is American-based. It could be different in your country. Hopefully, they're being more rigorous with testing where you live. Now, what you can see here from this, and this is, again, from the official CDC site, it's listing all confirmed cases in the United States. The total tested number of cases is only 414. So this is really worrisome, the fact that the actual number of tests is so low. Now on top of that, we've said that the tests are not very reliable. A lot of these tests are sending back false negatives. So that's another layer of you know, problems on top of all this. So what can you do? Is this just to make you afraid? Well, no, I think there's some very practical things that you can do, no matter where you live, um, that you can kind of be thinking about or start taking um, to prepare for this thing. Now, I've said from the beginning of making these videos that I'm not trying to cause a panic. I'm not just trying to make you start going out and panic buying and buying gold and bonds and these kinds of things. Um, that's not the point of these videos. The, the point of these is really a genuine concern because of seeing what's happened here and realizing that other countries are not going to be able to do what China has done. Other countries are not going to be able to shut off roads, block off people from going to work, you know, track you with your, your ID and your facial recognition to know exactly where you've gone. Because all of this stuff that's been done, all this surveillance, this big data, is now being used to predict where people are going, where epidemics might be happening, and, and let you know if you've come into contact with someone. It's, it's actually very incredible when you think about what, what's being done. Other nations don't have that kind of a network set up. So if this becomes an issue in other places, you're going to see very, very different outcomes. So what can you do? Well, there's a few things that I think you can start thinking in advance about. Uh, looking at what's happened in Wuhan, looking at what happened or what's happening now in, in Daegu in South Korea, and now looking at Italy, what's happening in these different places. They're doing really the same thing, and they might be just following China's lead of shutting down uh, public venues. So no schools, uh, offices being closed, shops being closed, uh, no you know giant sporting events, no concerts, these types of things where mass people gather. Also, in some parts of Korea, it looks like they're also shutting down religious services. So any of these mass gatherings are, are being restricted. So it is possible, maybe even likely, that if something similar happens in the town where you live or in the city where you live, that these measures will also be taken. So a few things that you might want to keep in mind. Here in China, we've moved pretty much all of our work to online. Schools are all going online. So you might start thinking about what kind of online tools you can utilize to continue to work if this thing happens where you live. Um, Skype is one tool that is very popular in other, uh, in other countries. Here, Skype doesn't work so well. We use an app called Zoom, Zoom Cloud Meetings. It's very, very effective for teaching. It's very effective for networking. There's lots of nice tools that are, are included in there. Um, some other online uh, type project management sites you can start looking into. Another one that I've used in, in, pr presently and in the past is Slack, which is really good for having different members coming in and sharing ideas. You can post video clips and pictures and whatnot. So these type of online tools that you can utilize so you don't have to see people in person, these might be tools that are necessary to use 
uh, in the coming weeks and months if this thing continues to grow. Um, getting familiar with some of the software, updating the software. If you've got Skype on your phone, make sure you're using the latest version so you can continue to use it uninterrupted. Um, you might even think about communicating with your employer. Uh, see if there are any plans in place uh, if this thing happens locally for the workers to work from home. Now obviously this isn't going to be practical for all of you out there. Some of you need to go out uh, if you're performing service jobs, if you have to meet you know, uh, in your construction or you're in, in some sort of painting, whatever, where you have to go out. It may be that that work will be interrupted, but it could be that you'll be able to continue to do that. It depends on what the local ordinance says about all this, how, how things are handled there, but just something to keep in mind. Um, what if you have children in school? Well, make sure you've got the teacher's most recent contact info. Make sure that you are on their mailing list if they've got one. Make sure that they have your uh, up-to-date info in case any announcements are made and in case the kids have to take an extended break. Um, if the child is at home for hours now, they're going to probably be needing to do some sort of schoolwork uh, online or possibly doing work at, at home and then turning it into the school, uh, which is similar to what we've seen here in China. So kind of thinking ahead for some of these things, how can you move your current life indoors, basically, for an extended period of time? Here in China, we're going on a month now where we haven't been really let outside. That doesn't mean we haven't gone outside. We can, but it's very infrequent. It's once every two or three days when we need to buy groceries. Other than that, we're not going out. Um, it may be that things happen similarly where you are, so kind of thinking in advance about, about these things. Um, also, if you don't have one, thinking about getting a tablet. Uh, there's a lot of cheap, maybe secondhand tablets that you can get that would allow you to really easily do voice chat and whatnot so that you can free your phone up for being able to call people. So having those two devices or possibly a laptop. Again, if your child is able to do uh, schoolwork or you're able to do work at home, a laptop is going to be much more convenient than using an iPad where you, know, you won't be able to type as, as quickly. So just some of these things that you can uh, start taking into account. And then of course having an emergency bag or sometimes it's called a go bag. Um, the the list for go bags vary from site to site. Some people, you know, they say you want to include all this stuff. Some people say go light. Um, but most of these uh, sites say the same things about the basics. You want to have three to five days of food and water. You want to have some cash. Um, you want to also have photocopies of important documents. So that's travel documents. Um, if you're a foreigner living in, in a country, another country, uh, having obviously your passport, photocopy of your passport and visa, uh, marriage licenses, those types of, of things, just in case something happens locally and you have to, you have to leave. We have that all in one place that you can take with you. So again, I want to emphasize here, not trying to cause a panic, not trying to make people start getting paranoid about, you know, we can't trust the numbers and, and this kind of thing. Um, just be alert to what's going on around you. Um, if you uh, are, are able to, if the local you know, city or, or hospitals have a Twitter account, maybe subscribing to that and just kind of keeping an eye on things, seeing where this thing goes, if there's any strange reported cases, and just kind of playing it by ear. But certainly don't be complacent because it seems like a lot of these places, it's being, uh, it's, it's erupting so quickly and catching people off guard and they haven't had time to prepare. So if things are normal where you are, this might be the right time to prepare. That's all. That's the point of making this video. Uh, we'll see where this thing goes. I, I'm still hoping that you know we'll have a breakthrough and we'll contain these places, but it certainly isn't looking like that. So please uh, stay safe and stay healthy, and we'll see you next time.